Today we're going to show you how I went from the kitchen to designing the ultimate <laughs> spell check device ever. Then after that, I'm oh, going to take you down in the dungeon. And at the end of the video, there is a puzzle for you guys to solve. Let's do a quick recap what this channel is about. Here we talk about PEMF. We blow things up. I zap myself. Um, we talk about how to build them. We create a community about building PEMF together. We also try to sell some PEMF to some people that just don't have the tools to build them. But at the end of the day, it's all about PEMF. And investigate the unknown. Like Reynolds Syndrome, our sponsor for today. Did you know that Reynolds disease caused some areas of the body, such as finger and toes, to feel numb in cold response to cold temperature or stress? In Reynolds disease, smaller artery that supply blood to the skin narrows. That limits the blood flow to the affected area which we call vasospasm? Vasospasm. Yeah, without sponsors like Reynolds disease, uh, there would be no need for PEMF. Anyway, so thanks, I guess. Let's get on with today's adventure. So a friend of mine that's got our mat, uh, his wife has really bad arthritis in her hand and she saw a really big difference when she was using the mat. So that gave me an extremely good idea. Why don't I just make her a pair of mitts? that she could wear when she's pimping. So here's the mitts, oven mitts, obviously, with the coils on it. Here's them mounted. This would be like a beautiful prototype. So then I made the coils, like we always make the coils around here. If you haven't seen that, watch the previous video. And then uh, we taped it up like we always do, and we did some math. Here's another example of my calculator. So we've got 24 volt system, six amp, uh, 22 gauge, three calls in series, and two series in parallel with each other. Paralleling as much as possible is always the way to do it. We have 100 wraps, and I was going to put nothing on the outside. But as you can see, this is ridiculous. Uh, that was never going to work, right? So I was going to add um, a 4 ohm resistor. But you see, like 4.57 amps, and all the heat goes to the resistor. So I thought, you know what? Let's just get rid of the resistor, because it's one more thing that we don't need. And let's lower that to um, like 6 volts with a buck buck converter there, and I'll show you that in the video. So we've got the same amount of amp here. We're 80% of what the power supply can do, which is good. And we can run the whole thing that way, and that's what I end up doing. And right here I enter the data, and you can see that we're guessing about 67, 68 gauze. We'll see what the meter tells us. Those are usually optimistic. Really enjoying doing this work. Like, this this is a blast. A lot of people ask me why I do it. It's just because I enjoy it. And then I can help people along the way. I mean, that's a win-win situation right there. Um, so I put the buck converter uh, to lower the voltage. It's just a mini transformer, basically, right? And there's the buck, fit perfectly into that little box. And then right here is the screw. So you put your meter on it, and then you turn the screw until you get the desired voltage. And there it was. Now, by a popular demand, while you watch me thinkering, let's talk about the square wave and why it's king. As you can see right there, we have a bipolar square wave. That means there's a positive and negative coming out of the signal. Now here we see the difference, right? The top one is a bipolar, so it goes up and down. The bottom one is unipolar. <laughs> if you're sitting in the chair and it's got arms, hang on with both hands, because what I'm about to tell you is gonna not only blow your mind, but it's really gonna make you understand something that very, very few people get. Okay, you ready? Here it is. All right, pay attention, stay with me. Slew rate is the change, okay? It's how fast something goes up and down. That's why in electronics, we call slew rate. Now here we see the, the top is the bipolar DC square wave. At the bottom is the magnetic rate of change. So basically, you can see where it starts. There's the rise. The time it takes to go from zero to peak, that's the slew rate. That's what we're after. Only the square wave can give us a slew rate as small as what you see on the picture right there. To put it simply, the magnetic wave form is a representation of the energy going through your coil on your mat. That's what's going through your coils on your mat and that's what goes through your body. Now research has shown time and time and time again that the magic number that we want is 100 millitesla per meter per milliseconds. 
And what does that mean? It means it's fast. Okay, I hope you're still with me. What we've talked about so far is the time rising or slew rate. We need that to be 100 millitesla per meter per millisecond. Okay, that's what the science shows that helps the body do their things. Any more than that, and you're losing efficiencies on it. Okay, that's all you need to know right now. Square wave is king because it gives us the the exact time that we need for that slew rate to be perfect. Well, let's have a look at a different type of waveform. We know about the square wave. We said slew rate in yellow right here. Now, look at a sine wave. This is hand drawn, by the way. Like, don't take this to the Bible. Look how slow it is compared. And look at the sawtooth. Now, very interesting is the sawtooth. It's got a reverse slew rate of what we need. It's got really fast up, but it's no good to for the rises. So that's probably the worst type of waveform. Okay, enough sciencey stuff. Let's get back to our build. Just remember what's important to know, and then we'll just go from there. So now I was looking at the um, the gauze. Remember, we expected to see a number. We're getting 50 gauze out of the the machine, which I was really happy with. I may have run a little lower voltage than what I calculated originally, and we predicted 67. I expected that. I didn't think it was going to make. Uh, uh, 67 but I knew it was gonna be pretty close now we're looking at 50 gauze per coil at the center of it um, per ring right so I was pretty happy with that now let's move on to the next thing the duty cycle a lot of people have been asking me about the duty cycle so let's just talk about it quickly first of all we can see on the chart here we got 25 50 and 75 percent duty cycle is always expressed in percentage what does that mean very simply is that 50% duty cycle, 50% of the time it's on, 50% of the time it's off. 25% duty cycle, 25% of the time it's on, 75% of the time it's off. And if you look at the 75% duty cycle, well, 75% of the time it's on, 25% of the time it's off. It's that simple. There's really not much magic to it. So 100% duty cycle is on all the time. 0% duty cycle, it's off. As I'm tinkering in the background, getting a little surprise ready for you guys, um, I want to talk about arthritis and how PEMF can help with arthritis. I got a bunch of questions. I got a friend who's going to answer them for us. I always wanted to know what are the main causes for arthritis anyway. Steve, to put it simply, most forms of arthritis are thought to be caused by a fault in the immune system that causes the body to attack its own tissues in the joints. This may be inherited genetically. Other forms of arthritis can be caused by problems with the immune system or by a metabolic condition, such as gout. Well, thanks for that. Can PMF help with arthritis? That's another good question. Of course, Steve. PEMF therapy appears to be very effective in the short term to relieve pain and long term to improve function in patients with OA. As usual, more studies are needed. So one big thing that arthritis does is destroy cartilage. Can PMF help with that too? Studies demonstrated that PEMF has beneficial effects on cartilage regeneration. And what do you base that statement on? Good question, Steve. A quick search on NIH yields over 200 results. If we do a quick dive, we find promising conclusions. PEMF, or PEMFing as you like to say, promotes cartilage healing in rats, or amazing side effects regarding improvement of wound closure within 24 hours. Finally, how we observe very positive healing ability of PEMF on the bone tissues, giving long-term protection against developing osteoarthritis, OA. These are just quick examples, but I must admit, PEMFing should be regarded as a potential, strong player in that field. PEMF can provide non-invasive, safe and easy-to-apply method to treat pain, inflammation and dysfunctions associated with rheumatoid arthritis, RA, and osteoarthritis, OA. Most important to remember, PEMF has a long-term record of oh, yeah. safety. Yeah, for sure, that one. That one is a good one, too. Well, thanks there, Mr. Voice. I'll have to make introduction to my new, uh, my new improvement to my software. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing in the background right now. I'm taking my portable PEMF apart, which, by the way, is an amazing little thing. Um, I can connect it to my uh, oscilloscope, and then we're going to do a live a duty cycle moment. So... I'm hoping you had a break in your brain from all the learning we just did. We're going to review that live right now. 
So the ZK is plugged into the oscilloscope. Now we're going to be reviewing duty cycle live. The top it means it's on, the bottom means it's off. And as we get to increase the duty cycle, it gets to be on more than it is off. Right now, it's on 100% of the time or on all the time. There's no pulse anymore. That would be useless PMF altogether. Remember guys, what's important is the slew rate of the magnetic field. That's what makes the difference in the body. So you need a pulse. There we go, and we're making our way down to zero, which will be off all the time. There you go. So right now, there's nothing. The machine could be off, it would be the same thing. Now, you need a pulse for PMF to work. If not, we could just be sitting on magnets. Magnets don't work. The slew rate of the magnetic field induced by the square wave is what is where the magic is from. Anything above 50% is just the opposite of the waveform. You're not gaining anything. So if you look here, 75% of the time on, if you're to flip that upside down, you would just get 25%. I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to flip the waveform. It's going to read it backwards. And there it is. So you're getting the same amount of up and down. Just one is on most of the time, the other one is off most of the time. But remember, what counts is the pulse, the slew rate of the magnetic field. I always tell people, don't go higher than 35% duty cycle. There's no need to. You're just pumping heat at that point. Hey, I still owe you a puzzle. It's coming up next. But before we do that, let's talk about our sponsors. I would like to know if PEMF can help with Reynolds disease. Well, Steve, this is very short notice. I have not yet had time to look into this. I was shut created a few moments ago after all. I tell you what, give me a few days to read all about it and I will get back to you. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> let me guys, uh, let me guys, let me show you guys my mitts. This is the final product. This is what uh, I sent to my friend. Um, it's a prototype, it's a work in progress, but as we found out today, um, there's a good chance that it'll help her quite a bit more than just using the mat. This is what it looks like finish. I repurposed the uh, dog pemph and the bipolar power unit. It's nice and clean, um, and we'll see. I'm going to work out the kinks as we go. I'll keep you guys in the loop on that. Now. Next, there's the puzzle that I promise you. Leave in the comment what you think that is. Now look at it. Look at it carefully. I don't know if you notice what you think you're noticing or what I want you guys to notice. See that? No, that's amazing if you ask me. <laughs> I'm flipping you off. Are you? Really? <laughs> Nice mix. Can you tap on your computer with them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee.